I've called my story The Shovel. This pretty little town, Beltson, is where my father was born in 1894. He had three sisters and a brother, and is shown here in this family portrait taken in about 1910. He's at the back in the centre, and I put a little brown dot above his head. His parents, my grandparents, Adolf and Ida Altman, were quite well known in town because they ran a large recycling plant and my grandfather also was the chairman of the local Jewish community. This is the letter heading from the recycling plant. In 1927, my father decided to go and live in Boston in America and he was working there. A few years later, something happened that was to change all of our lives. This photo shows some of the workers in my grandfather's recycling factory, and he made the habit of having regular chats with them. One day in 1931, while he was doing that, one of the workmen had hoisted a shovel onto their shoulders, and by some bizarre accident, this shovel hit my, fa my grandfather rather in the head and knocked him unconscious. He did recover, but the family were clearly concerned enough that they asked my father to come back from America to Bautzen to look after the running of the factory, which he did. Once all that was sorted out, he looked around for something else to do, and he came across this bankrupt factory in a nearby town called Neudorf, which was making or had been making specialized cardboard for the radio industry and also for the motor industry. He bought the factory and got it up and running again. And this is me holding a piece of that original cardboard from my father's time. Everything went very well until 1938, when the Nazis decided that Jews could not own businesses and the Schwemühle factory was compulsorily purchased by the Nazis and my father received less than 1% of its value. Things got from bad to worse because on Kristallnacht, the 10th of November 1938, he and all the other male Jews of Bautzen were forced to march through town carrying anti-Semitic placards. This photograph shows my father in the front row with the hat and with a little white diamond under his left shoe so you can identify him. He was then sent to Buchenwald concentration camp the next day and this is the arrivals register which shows his name at the top. Somehow, a month later, he was able to negotiate his release and a few months after that, he was able to emigrate to the UK. This shows his visa and that the fact that he arrived in Southampton on the 31st of March 1939. I don't know how long after that, but he then met my mother, Hilda, who was also a German refugee from a town near Cologne. They got married, had their family, and that would have been that. Now, this is the family that um, Hilda and Ernst had. There's obviously them together on the top left. Then there's me and my pram. Then there must, there's my sister, Vivian, and at the bottom. There's me with my then girlfriend, Joan, who then became my wife, our two children, Catherine and Alex, and their children, Charlie, Natalie, Sasha, and Lila. But what about the shovel? Good question. If the shovel had not hit my grandfather and injured him, then my father would have stayed in America and not gone back to Germany and not been in Germany when war broke out. He therefore would not have met my mother because he wouldn't have emigrated to the UK and they would each have led their own lives. Obviously, I wouldn't have been born, nor would my sister. Because I wasn't born, I wouldn't have met Joan, who would have then met someone else and raised her own family. And Catherine and Alex, and Charlie, Natalie, Sasha and Lila wouldn't have been born either. So the shovel incident meant that we were all born and we have led very happy lives. So thank you, shovel.